Hey, what's up guys? This is Two Awesome Men. Uh, this is our video over our top 15, like our best, our favorite movies of 2018, the 15 best, that was a weird way of saying it, <laughs> but our, our favorite 15 movies, top 15 movies of 2018, I guess that's the, that's the best way to say it. <laughs> um, so anyways, these, these are our picks, not so much of what we think like the consensus on like what people think is the best, but like just our personal preference or what our favorite movies were. Uh, that's enjoyableness and better, good writing, all that mixed into one. What we think is the best ones. This has nothing to do with grades because really grades aren't really that big of a deal uh, whenever it comes to like which ones you think are better. Yeah, I mean, it's like yeah. exact grades aren't that yeah. important. The what the, where the. The area that's at is yeah. kind of important. Yeah, like, like if, if one's like a ninety and one's yeah. like a, like a like a sixty, it's obviously going to be like the nineties better. But yeah. like whenever it's like one's like a hundred percent or like one's like ninety percent, mm -hmm. the ninety percent could be better than the hundred percent. So and also just a side note that we didn't we haven't seen every movie that came out last year. So if a movie that you saw isn't on this list, and uh, just know that we we probably didn't see it. Yeah. So like we didn't go to see uh, just so we can go ahead and say these. So. We, so people don't get mad at us, but we didn't see Creed 2. And we also didn't see uh, Boy Erased or just like- yeah, Or some... Green Book. Or Crazy Rich Asians. So those are the movies we didn't see, so that's why they're not on this list. Uh, anyways, let's get right into this. Before we get started, we're gonna go ahead and name off a few of our honorable mentions. These are movies that really are very good, and I really do highly recommend all of these movies, uh, but they just didn't make it to the list. Movies like Black Klansman, Isle of Dogs, and Thoroughbreds. My honorable mentions are Blind Spotting, First Reformed, Searching, and Christopher Robin. Number 15. My number 15 is going to be First Reformed. Uh, this stars, uh, what's his name? Stephen Hawking? No. Uh, Ethan Hawk. <laughs> this movie starts. Oh man, that was a that was a slip up right there. <laughs> this movie starts Ethan Hawke, um, and about this movie, one of the main things I do want to say is that this movie is very slow. If you're not one of those people that can really handle slow movies, and I'm talking really slow movies, then don't go and see this movie uh, because it's not for those kind of people. If you do think you like, <clears throat> you can be okay with really slow movies as long as they have something to them then go and see this movie, because this movie really fascinated me quite a bit. Because even though it's really slow, I never really completely found it boring. I never actually found it boring. Um, and there's really a great thing about movies like this that actually are able to get people talking. I didn't hear a lot of people talking about this, but if enough people watch this, I really, don't think it, I really do think it could get people talking about what this movie is actually about. And that's one of the best things about movies that do come from A24, is even the ones that aren't the best always have something about them that's respectable. And this movie, First Reformed, is really good, and I really do recommend it for those people who do think they can take those slower kind of movies. Now, for my number 15, I have the movie Tag. Now, before y'all get go crazy, and because I know this movie probably isn't a lot of people's favorites of uh, last year, I do want to say that going into it, I did not want to see this movie like at all. Uh, I had like no interest in it. I thought it was kind of a dumb concept. Uh, but my sister kind of drug me to go see it. We didn't. We had a lot of time to kill on that day. And uh, after watching it, it's actually turned out to be one of the funniest movies I've seen in a little while. Uh, it's not like the funniest movie, but it's definitely one of those movies that I can watch over and over again and still laugh at a lot of the jokes that are made. And it did have a kind of a little sentimental. Uh, thing towards the end and uh, is, overall I just liked it a lot. Number 14. My number 14 is going to be Searching which stars John Cho and this movie really surprised me. Uh, there was two movies this year which we'll get to the other one later that my cousin Brittany and Zach's sister Brittany um, really kind of just drug us to go see these movies because we didn't really care to see them and honestly whenever I heard about it and people told me about it I didn't want to see it because it's one of those movies where like it's kind of like unfriended uh, well, a lot like Unfriended, where everything is not filmed from like an actual camera, it's all filmed from in-world cameras. So whenever you watch the movie, it's either going to come from like a laptop, or it's going to come from a security cam, or something like that. It's all, from, all of it is going to come from that, usually it's going to be from some kind of computer or TV. And so, 
going into this movie, I wasn't excited about it at all because that concept was really stupid to me. And that's also, honestly a concept that I didn't want to continue because the movie's like Unfriended. But after seeing this movie, it actually, the, one of the biggest reasons why this movie is on my list is because this movie made me realize that I actually would like to see more movies like this. And filmed in this kind of style because you realize that even though you may not like the filming style, if a person that if a person with true skill wants to make any kind of movie, they will be able to figure it out and make it and actually use the type of filming to its advantage. And that's really what I love about this movie because this movie was heartfelt. This movie was actually engaging and very suspenseful at times. And this movie actually had a fantastic surprise at the end. My number 14 is Black Panther. Now this movie actually turned out to be uh, one of my favorite Marvel movies, one of the, my favorite MCU movies. Uh, just because it actually took the material seriously. It didn't make jokes every 10 seconds, uh, even though there were a couple of jokes. It's still, overall, it was pretty serious tone. Uh, it had one of the best villains in the, in the MCU with uh, Killmonger, and even um, uh, Andy Serkis' character was even a pretty good villain as well. And T'Challa is probably one of my favorite uh, protagonists in the MCU, uh, because this movie was... It's not, it wasn't really a coming of age because he's not like a teenager or anything, but he sort of had to grow up and become the king because his father was killed and he's having to become a king and learn all the uh, history that his father did with uh, T'Challa's, I mean with uh, Killmonger's father. And so he had to really kind of like grow up in this movie. And I really like the whole storyline. Number 13. My number 13 is also Black Panther, so I'm not going to talk about this a whole lot because it's right after Zack's. Um, but I will say, this movie really did surprise me. I was really hoping it was going to be good because it's obviously it's in the MCU and it definitely came out being one of the better movies in the MCU. Uh, like Zach said, this movie did take itself seriously. Not so seriously that it was like really dark or anything, but it took itself so seriously. It, it took itself seriously enough to be just grounded, you know, uh, grounded within the world that it's in. I really love how... Uh, now they're starting to do stuff with the villains in the MCU because before like Spider-Man Homecoming you never really had a great villain uh, they were all they were all kind of okay villains like they were something there were seemed to be some sort of threat but they never actually seemed to be any type of I never really cared for them that much they never really gave me anything to care about and so what I really liked about this with Killmonger is Killmonger was just a such a like a villain you could really understand what he was doing you may not agree with it you may not like it I, I mean obviously I don't like what he's doing but you understand completely why he's doing everything that he's doing you understand it from his point of view it makes sense from his point of view and so that's one of the biggest reasons why I can respect this movie a whole lot now before I go to my 13, I do want to bring up that it did just start raining like all of a sudden, like really like really bad here. So if you hear like a little sound in the background, then it's just the rain. But my number 13 is Love, Simon. Uh, this is one movie that we, uh, me and Marquez just watched last week for the first time. Or actually this week for the first time. And I'm really glad that, I did, that we did because it's just a pretty great movie. Like I'm honestly like, I've never been gay, but they really made me feel the emotions that the main character is Simon, how he would, how he was feeling in this movie, and made me really understand just the his mindset and how like he, he doesn't feel like he should have to come out uh, to everybody and like the the emotions of how he doesn't want his whole world to change because he knows that once he comes out everything's going to change about his life and it just made it so relatable in a different kind of sense. Number twelve. All right, guys, for my number 12, I have a really weird movie, probably one of the weirdest movies I've seen in a long time, which is Sorry to Bother You. And this movie, this movie is one of the strangest things I've seen, really. Um, with, within, within its own world, I've seen really strange movies like Swiss Army Man, but its own type of movie, this movie kind of reminds me of a lot of like those movies like Airplane. It kind of brings you back to those days, whenever movies really just knew how to do this really strange type of comedy. And the movie itself is just hilarious. I kept laughing over and over again throughout this entire movie and it was just so weird and surprising because this movie was able to set up a world for you to where the surprises didn't really have to make sense at all. Like this, I mean, with, they make sense when they're in their own world, but they could just be out of nowhere because everything in this movie is just comes out of nowhere. And just from the very, just straight up from the very beginning, it's just a strange movie. Uh, the acting to me was really great. Uh, 
and really the comedic timing was pretty spot on for all the jokes. I like, I love this movie. It's one of the funniest movies I've seen in a long time. I definitely recommend people to go watch this. Uh, like I said already, uh, some people may not like this. Some people may even hate this movie because it's such a strange movie. So go into it watching it. Just be ready for just a really weird movie. And I really do think you'll enjoy it a lot. My number 12 is Aquaman. Now I know this movie was pretty divisive with audiences and especially with critics. A lot of people loved it. A lot of people actually really hated it. Uh, and then there's a couple of people in the middle. And I, I, know, I can understand the flaws that a lot of people had. It was a really over the top movie. It was a really cheesy movie. The CGI overall was great, but there were times where it was pretty obvious. But I, this was probably one of the most fun I've had in a superhero movie. Uh, and the visuals were just amazing. It was just a, it was just a masterpiece, and it was just a pretty epic movie. And I love the storyline, the storyline between with Aquaman and Ocean Master, their relationship. Uh, the acting wasn't the greatest, but I did like just overall the characters that were in this movie. Number eleven. For number eleven, I have Love Simon, and Love Simon was really. It, it was a movie that really did have you feel a little bit panicky because in this movie you just it makes you completely feel and understand what the guy is going through um, and like I said like, like Zach said even I and me and him haven't really gone through these kind of things but you really watch it and you're like man they he really is having to go through so much stuff right now and you really just begin to just feel it and so it's really a really well put together movie I will say there are a few times where it does get a little cheesy overall, um, but the cheesiness never is never really that bad. You know, you can it's cheesiness you can handle, but overall, and also I will say the the comedy is really spot on throughout this entire movie. Every joke I at least kind of chuckled on, but most of them I really did completely laugh on. Uh, this movie is really good, and I really do recommend trying it out. My number 11 is Black Klansman. Uh, this was honestly probably my first Spike Lee movie that I've ever seen, I think. Uh, and it was just amazing. Like, uh, the storyline is pretty much a black man and a Jew uh, infiltrate uh, the KKK in like the 60s or 70s. And if that storyline doesn't intrigue you enough to watch it, then I don't know what to tell you. Because it was just such a fun movie and it dealt with a lot of uh, kind of dark material, but it, it did it with such like suspense and just it was just so entertaining to watch number 10 so guys for number 10 we both have a quiet place so we're going to both talk about this um a quiet place to me i don't want to shy away from this fact the fact that this movie did have plot holes a uh, pretty decent amount of them i don't i don't want to say it had nearly as much as people say it did but uh but i just i just don't want i just want to make sure that we do throw that out of the way that there was this movie to have plot holes but other than that I really love this movie. This movie really showed how great of a director John Krasinski really is. Yeah, and it honestly felt like a short movie because I mean it's an hour and a half long movie, so it's a it's a feature length film, but it honestly felt like a short movie. And even with saying that, it fit in so much into it, just so much character, and you could feel the love that the family had with each other, and it dealt with like forgiveness mm -hmm. and like the survival. You you have this family who's been living in this pretty much a post-apocalyptic world for like so long yeah. and you see their different methods on how they do different things and it just is just so much packed in this movie in such yeah. a small time yeah and a lot of people uh, this movie is a lot like that new movie that came out called Bird Box on Netflix but I think this movie is significantly better like I agree. a whole lot more better because this movie made you feel so much for the characters and they weren't even talking <laughs> yeah, like no. they barely talked at all but you felt you knew that they loved each other. They, you knew the love the father had for the kids. You know, you just knew it. You felt it. And like Bird Box, I didn't feel most of the stuff that was going on between the characters. You know, I'm not going to say that movie was terrible, but you didn't feel it. This movie, you just felt felt it all. And there's a lot of times towards the end where you almost did feel like tearing up. Yeah, I know. I definitely got choked up on yeah. at least two scenes that I remember yeah. in the ending. Yeah, and this movie, uh, some people don't like it because I don't know. They 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 try to point out the the plot holes. But the thing is, is, I don't understand the big deal about plot holes. To an extent, obviously, I will say, yeah, this movie did have plot holes, and, they, and you, there were obvious plot, plot holes. But this movie was about so much more than just the monsters. A lot of people wanted to, this movie to have the monsters, to, for them to talk about the monsters, what happened before at all. 
you know, how the monsters came. But then that would have just made it a monster movie. And even though technically it was, that wasn't the point of the movie. Mm -hmm. This movie was a broken family, a, fa a family uh, where the daughter didn't feel like her father loved her. And it was just a movie of a family that needed to bond back together. And it was just thrown through the vehicle of this of, of the monster movie. And so that's why this movie was so great to me. Number nine. My number nine is Blind Spotting. This movie I just watched right before this video, actually, me and Zach, like right before it. Uh, so it's really clear in my mind. Uh, this movie I loved a lot. Um, this there is some really intense scenes in this film. It's about um, it's about a guy who's just coming off of probation, and he has this friend that he really gets in trouble with a lot, and he's really starting to kind of learn that maybe he really shouldn't be friends with this guy because this guy isn't really the best guy to hang out with. And you really start to feel him because it's kind of an understandable thing, really, because you have, you know, I've had friends that I've had in my past that I've, I mean, I've known Zach forever, for a long time, ever since we are kids, obviously we're cousins. And so it's kind of a thing of that. I would never stop being friends with Zach, but if I ever had to stop being friends with Zach, it'd be something really difficult for me to do because it's just something that you had known this guy for your entire life. And you just feel like you feel obligated to stay with them, even if they are like that. And uh, he really, it, and you can really feel that connection between the friends, between the two main characters and their friendship. And but you also are watching this, and you're like, yeah, this guy really isn't the best guy to hang out with, like at all. And I will say one of my favorite things about this movie is the fact that uh, the guy, the guy doesn't really see he, the friend. They don't make him so horribly outwardly like irresponsible, like a terrible person, because that would that would kind of be ridiculous. I kind of thought that's what it was going to be what it was going to be, but at first you kind of just start noticing that like yeah he's not really the best guy. There is one scene that you're like okay that's horrible, but he's really he's really just this broken guy, and he's just a guy that's really not great to hang out with. In this movie. I really do recommend this movie just because of that and also just there's some really good suspenseful scenes and some fantastic acting from all around, all the characters. My number nine is Sorry to Bother You. Now, I did I saw this movie when it back when it was in theaters last year and I honestly didn't really know what to make of it because like Marquez said, it is a weird movie. And but we watched it or I watched it again uh, like last week with Marquez and I'm so glad I did because I probably wouldn't have put it in my uh, top list, if I hadn't seen it again, because it's such a uh, such a weird movie, and such the comedy is so weird, the story is so weird. There's a thing like at the end that's like so out there that I honestly didn't know how to wrap my mind around it. Uh, I, I did like the co watching it a second time. I love the comedy. I love the writing. I love the acting. I love pretty much everything about it. It is a weird one, so brace yourself if you go into it and have an open mind while watching it. Number eight. My number eight is Into the Spider-Verse. <clears throat> and now this movie, this movie really surprised me. I'm not gonna act like I thought it was gonna be bad, but I definitely did not expect how good it was. This movie, in which, just like he's done in the past, Phil Lord, who wrote the screenplay and, wrote the, and created the story for this film, he's made other movies that aren't really good ideas at all. Lego Movie was a terrible, idea. was a really bad idea. Like, he, that movie really was just set up to fail, but he made a great movie with it. And then also, 21, 22 Jump Street, those movies, such stupid ideas, but like, just he just did it, they were just fantastically written, great comedy. And this movie is no different from those, with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, it had such a great story to it. And what, when I, whenever I say this movie shouldn't have worked, it really shouldn't have. You have all these different Spider-Man characters, all completely different Spider-Man characters, completely different personalities. You throw Spider-Man Noir into a movie that's supposed to be comedy, it's a terrible idea. But it works so well, and Spider-Man Noir was one of my favorite things about the entire movie. Nicolas Cage casted perfectly as Spider-Man Noir. Who would have thought that? Who would have looked at Nicolas Cage and said, let's cast him as Spider-Man? Nobody on earth would have thought that. But this movie just knew what to do, just knew what to do so perfectly. Um, even with Kingpin, even though I felt like they should have gone a little stretch further with his character, I do feel like what they gave him was pretty interesting. They gave him a t pretty interesting background. Uh, they, uh, the characters, the, the main character, Miles Morales, he did fantastic. His, his, his character was fantastic. His character arc, there was character arcs for, 
for the two main Spider-Men in this movie. Also, Jake Johnson. I thought that was going to be a terrible idea as well. And even in the trailer, I thought it was going to be a bad idea. I thought it was bad. In this movie, it was perfect. This movie did so much stuff right that really should have not been done right. And that's one of the biggest things that I want to commend this movie for. Now, the last eight on my list are, I honestly think that they're, pretty, they're all pretty equally great. Uh, honestly, the next three on my list, I, the past several months, I thought they were going to be like in the top five on my list. But as, as I was writing it down and ranking them, they just kept falling down. And I was pretty surprised that they fell so low. But for my number eight, I have A Star Is Born. Now this movie, this movie is actually another one that uh, my sister drug me, to, drug me and Marquez to actually, because I honestly thought it was just gonna be like an average, um, like a chick flick, lifetime kind of movie. I mean, obviously I, I, I expected it to be a little bit bigger because it's Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga, but I didn't really think it was gonna be that much. But going into it, it's such an emotional movie. Uh, the, you can feel the chemistry between Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga so much. And uh, Bradley Cooper, surprisingly, was an amazing singer in it. Especially when you know that they're singing live in this movie, not lip syncing. Lady Gaga did freaking amazing as acting. So it's like a little swap. Bradley Cooper was amazing at singing and Lady Gaga was amazing at acting. And there, it was just such an overall amazing performance. Sam Elliott did amazing in his supporting role. And the ending is probably one of the saddest endings I've seen all year. It really made me tear up. Number seven. My number seven is Mission Impossible Fallout. This movie, this is the best, to me, the best Mission Impossible film. This, this whole franchise is ridiculous. Pretty much all of them are good. I haven't seen the first two, but I've heard the second one isn't good. But pretty much other than that, all of them are good. And if you're making a franchise like this, where it just seems like the movies are getting better and better, that's just insane. That is just like, that is honestly insane that a franchise that's on their freaking, I think, seventh movie, I believe? Sixth or seventh movie, I believe. Uh, it's really, that's really a feat to commend right there. Uh, the acting in this movie is really good, like all the other ones. The fight scenes are phenomenal. The fight scenes are probably my favorite all year. Uh, some of my favorite, but if, if I'm thinking about it right now, they're probably my favorite all year. Um, just right, just like right, right to the punch. All of them are, and it just seems it's just such a real movie. It's so it's grounded within the world that they have created, and it's fantastic. Watch Tom Cruise just knocks it out of the park again. I know people don't like him, but like, just like you watch the movie, dude. It's like fantastic. More than Tom, more people than Tom Cruise have worked on Mission Impossible. Go watch it. Like it's such a great movie. My number seven is Annihilation. Now, like. Sorry to bother you, this movie, after watching it the first time, I honestly had no idea uh, what I thought about it. Uh, I, I'm not ashamed to say that I had to look up like uh, YouTube videos, like explanation videos for this movie. And the, the explanation that I finally came across, uh, I actually, once I re-watched re the movie, it's pretty obvious that that's what they're trying to go for. But just watching it, there's so, it's such a metaphorical movie. That it's not, any, there's nothing really straight to the nose about it, especially the ending. The ending kind of goes pretty far out there, but just overall, and and one thing I do want to bring out, which uh, me and Marquez talk about so much in this movie, is that it's an all female female cast, and like no, nobody really talks about it, but that is just a, such an amazing movie with how creepy it was, and it had probably had one of the creepiest moments in the movie with the uh, mutated bear, uh, just it sent shivers down my spine. Number six. For my number six, I'm gonna go for A Star Is Born. It's now Star Is Born. Man, this movie just got right to you. It just got right to you right away. This, this the acting in this movie is fantastic. I'm telling you, Lady Gaga better be nominated for an Oscar. She did phenomenal in this movie. I didn't know she could act like that. I, my sister likes watching those uh, American Horror Story shows. I hate those shows, and I watched. It. I didn't care for her. But in this movie, she really shows how great she can act. Bradley Cooper, his directing is fantastic. All the acting is phenomenal in this movie. It's one of the most emotional movies I've seen in a long time, let alone this year. Um, the end, obviously, if anyone's seen it, they know what I'm talking about when I say the end. Just like Zach said, it's one of the saddest things I've ever seen. I don't, I, I can get choked up during a movie, but it's not, it's, it's not a whole lot that I tear up during movies. And, I, and this year, I do want to say, I do feel like this year brought a lot of tearing up movies for me that I don't usually have. Um, and this movie 
was definitely just right there. Like it, it made me tear up completely. This the end of this movie. I, I love this movie so much. And honestly, there's not really that much flaws about it. In all honesty, I love this movie. I really do recommend any. If you haven't seen this movie, I really do recommend you go check it out. I would actually love to watch this movie again. My number six is Bad Times at the El Royale. The thing I love most about this movie is just how it was told, how most of the story was told. It was a pretty non-linear story. They kept jumping back and forth between what happened in one part and then you saw the same part but from a different, uh, different character's perspective. And it just added to uh, another element of this movie because it's a mystery movie first and foremost, but it was just, so, it was just told so brilliantly. Number five. My number five is going to be Avengers Infinity War. And this movie to me is what I was pretty much wanting all Marvel movies to be. I mean, not all the way to the end, obviously, but like just how, just how you could feel the stakes of this film. You could feel the danger of this movie. I feel like all the other Marvel movies, while, while they're, they're really good, most of them, uh, they, you, not all of them you can feel like the stakes. You can never feel the complete danger of the villain of the film. You never feel like there is a danger of the hero actually losing. And this movie you just you just felt it. You just you were scared yourself. You felt you felt danger yourself for these characters. And this movie this movie is just complete desperation. And that's one of the best things about this movie is because that's all you see on everybody's faces. You don't see a a sign of positivity in their face. You don't see a sign that they think they're gonna win. They just you just see a sign that they're just trying to understand what's happening. They're trying to understand it themselves. They're trying to figure out anything because they don't really know what to do. And that's one of my favorite things. That's one of my favorite thing about this movie is that I feel like that's what movies like that should be. Hero with superheroes. As a superhero should have a villain that really just is gives them no hope at all in their mind. They just have no hope. And that's what all hero movies should be, I feel like. And that's one of my favorite things about this movie. It just has this eerie feeling towards the end. Obviously, pretty much everybody knows what happens at the end now. But it's just one of the best endings to me. It's Because unlike Batman vs Superman, where at the end it gives you a feeling like, oh, Superman's going to be alive. This movie, even though you know most of them are going to be back, they don't give you that feeling at the end. And that's what I love about it. Everybody makes fun of it like, oh, they're just coming back. That part doesn't matter. What matters is that at the end of this movie, they give you no sign that they're coming back. They give you no hope. They give you, you just are hopeless by the end of this movie. Now to start off the top five on my list, at number five, I have Mission Impossible Fallout. And like Marquez said, for this movie to be the sixth movie in a franchise is just so mind blowing because of how great it is. And it's just, it dives so deep into Tom Cruise's uh, character because it's an action movie, but there's so much character that's brought forth in this movie. And, but so that aside, this is honestly one of my favorite action movies I've seen in the past several years because the action is so well uh, crafted and choreographed and the way it was shot was just amazing. You could see everything that was going on with the wide shots and everything. There's, there wasn't a lot of editing in the fighting scenes like there are in a lot of other action movies. You could see everything that was going on. and. Just to know that a lot of the stunts were actual, like, practical things that uh, the actors actually did and they weren't cgi that much, it's just so mind-blowing. And even Tom Cruise broke his ankle on one of the uh, stunts. That's how you know how dangerous these stunts are that they were doing. It's just so such a masterpiece that was crafted in this movie. Number four. My number four is Annihilation. And Zach has already talked about this movie, but this movie... This movie to me, as soon as I watched it, you just sit there kind of in awe. And it's a kind of awe of like you're watching, you don't know what in the world you just, you just experienced, but you know you loved it. Like I absolutely know I love that movie. This is a movie we're about to review right after it came out, but we had no idea how to because we hadn't put all of our thoughts together in words until a lot longer after it. And then we decided to put up a little theory video. That was really good. Uh, but this movie to me, is one of the is this movie almost makes you realize why you love why a person loves film because it's film I feel like a lot of film should be like this film that gets people talking film that gets people to actually question 
question what is happening in this movie and to actually come to a conclusion of what this movie is about. You know, that's what move that's what move art is. That's what art is, and that's what movies are an art form. And that's what I feel like. And I love this movie. And like Zach said, why wasn't anybody talking about it? Nobody did. Nobody at all. It only came out in the theaters in the US. So and it was the all female cast. Like I didn't realize it was an all female cast until halfway through this movie because you know, the movie itself didn't want to set, make its selling point that it was an all-female cast. That's how movies should be. I completely agree that we need more movies with female casts and strong female women. But don't give me crap like Ghostbusters that's going to make its only selling point that it's an all-female cast. Make a movie like Annihilation. That selling point is that it's a great movie that makes you think. And then you watch it and you realize how strong these females actually are. How great of the characters these female leads actually are and realizing this actually is what we need. Because this is the kind of movie you watch and you're like, okay, maybe we do actually need more female characters. This actually, this movie kind of throws that doubt away. But whenever you have nobody talking about it, then that's just gonna make us get more movies like Ghostbusters. And that's why I love, but that's why this movie really just needs so much more, many more, much more people to talk about it. Because this movie, it just, this movie really does mean a lot to me because I just feel like this movie is just true art. At number four, I have Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which is actually kind of fitting because I actually saw this movie four times in theaters. Uh, I didn't plan that out, but I just really I just noticed that after I had it written out, I was like, oh, that's cool. So it's kind of destined to be. But this movie was freaking amazing. Like, I honestly didn't think a Spider-Man movie was going to be able to reach the greatness that Spider-Man 2 was. But this movie, I honestly would put it up uh, pretty in line with Spider-Man 2 on how great it was. Because just the characters, Miles Morales was just so, they, they wrote him so well. Just his awkwardness, his trying to kind of fit into uh, the high school, the high school that he's being forced to go to by his father. And his just his relationship with his father, uh, they're kind of like splitting up, or not really splitting up, but they're kind of drifting apart in a way. And it's just so, so great how it's all tied together. Jake Johnson, like Marquez said, I was kind of worried about how his voice acting was going to be because even in the trailers, I didn't really like how his voice sounded. But in, after watching the movie, the character that they gave him, it just fit his voice so perfectly. The animation was just so amazing. I, I actually read that, uh, I don't know if it's true, but I read somewhere that each second of the movie took a week to render. That's how complex the animation was and just looked like a comic book come to life. A lot of movies have tried to do that and have failed, but this movie perfected it because they add, they it just added so much to the, the storytelling and how they, the story was told. And a lot of the comedy is actually uh, genuinely funny like I actually laughed at a lot of the comedy that was in it the action was amazing just everything about it I could watch this movie over and over again to be honest I saw it four times in theaters and I actually kind of want to see it again number three our number three is eighth grade uh, this is a film that I really wish we would have seen earlier because I wish we would have been able to put a video up about it because this film Bo Burnham Bo Burnham thank you so much for this movie this movie to me is just perfect. Yeah, it's it's honestly one of the most relatable movies I've seen yeah. almost probably ever. Because, like, I was a pretty shy kid. I mean, I'm still shy, but I was an extremely shy kid in elementary school and especially in middle school. And so I completely felt the, uh, the main character of this movie and what she was going through. And, like, honestly, like, this entire movie was just so, like, heart-wrenching. Because I, I related so much to the character. And, like, A Star is Born had a really sad ending. Uh, a few of the other movies that came out this year, that, or last year, were real, had really sad endings. But this movie was kind of sad overall because I related to how she was feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's just... I, I teared up, like, so much in this oh, movie. Yeah. I, I, like Marquez said, like, he doesn't cry that much in, this movie, in movies, and I don't really cry that much in movies. But this movie, honestly, legit had me, like, tear up. Yeah. And this movie, like, like Zach said, like me too, I was also really shy. I, I am also still shy. I was a really shy kid in, in, in middle school, in eighth grade. But this movie, it almost kind of makes you panicky at times. Yeah. Because you're watching like, oh my god, I've been through that before. Like, mm -hmm. what is she going to do? Yeah. You know? Because it's just something you feel. If you were a shy kid in, in middle school, 
it, I really recommend this movie for you because it's really good. It's so relatable and it's so emotional. There's so there's there's a maybe there's two extremely emotional scenes in this movie for me, and they're just so amazingly written. And they're not even really out of nowhere either. It's not really emotional scenes that are there because they just need to be there. It's emotional scenes that need to be there, but you actually feel them coming. You actually understand why they're there. You feel why they're there. And they just, this whole movie to me is just perfection. I just, I love it all the way from beginning to end, really. Yeah, and not, not only that, but it's like, it's emotional, but at the same time, it's like really inspirational. And not like a cheesy kind of inspirational yeah. But it's just like if you're if you're a shy kid in uh, like middle school, this is this character the the lead character is like just it kind of how I was in in middle school like I was really shy, but I wanted to be kind of outgoing and this movie kind of she's a lot like that how she wants to be like outgoing. Yeah, but she has a YouTube time, channel. Yeah, she has, yeah, which like is very, pretty, that, very that's small, relatable too. A small YouTube channel. Yeah, and she, so it's and she has like these inspirational speeches on her yeah. channel throughout the movie. And it's just so, it, it, like, I, I'm a grown man, but I'm, like, it's, it was so inspirational. Yeah. Coming from, like, an eighth grade uh, character. Yeah. And I, I thought Sam Elliott was a shoe-in for my uh, choice for Best Supporting Actor, but the dad, oh, the actor who played yeah. the dad was amazing. And the character itself of the dad was amazing. Yeah. And the, the girl, her, what's her name? Elsie. Yeah, uh, Fisher. Elsie Fisher. Yeah. yeah, Elsie Fisher. She better be nominated for an Oscar because she did amazing as well. Yeah. Also, the comment in this movie is spot on. I, I love, this movie was hilarious to me. Yeah. And that was the best thing. They just had a mixture of these different genres that they perfected in every single one of them. And I will say that again. Thank you, Bo Burnham. Number two. My number two is Bad Times at the El Royale. I feel like this video is getting a little long, so I'll try to speed it up a little bit. But this movie, to me, was also a movie that was perfection. Uh, whenever we watched it, we got to see like a week early. And watching it, you, I was just sitting there, just like with my mouth open, like, oh my goodness, I'm getting... Like, it's a movie you get to experience. You know, it's not a movie you watch. It's a movie that you get to experience. It's like a privilege to experience this movie to me because this movie is so perfectly crafted man like it, I don't really and I'm not a huge fan of all the time of non-linear movies sometimes I am they can be really good but the way this movie makes it the, the way this movie does the tells a story I mean, it's it's a linear storyline but every once in a while it does a flashback for each character to understand what they're doing and then they all meet each other in these flashbacks and the flashbacks themselves are so well done. The characters are fantastic. The acting is amazing. Dude, Chris Hemsworth, man. I did not know he could act like that. Okay, I never thought he was a bad actor, but not like that. I did not think he could act like that. This movie, to me... To me, if, if you're going to see any movie on this list... And my number one, I... Number one, obviously, I would recommend this... I would recommend that movie. But some people, I have heard, don't like it. This movie, to me... I would recommend this movie so much because to me this movie is just utter perfection and to me it has a universal good quality to it. My number two is Hereditary. Now this movie was uh, another one that was pretty de divisive and it was kind of split. The critics really loved it and the, uh, the audiences didn't really like it that much overall. And it's kind, of, it's kind of understandable to see because the marketing for this movie, the trailers that were put out, it kind of made you seem like it was going to be like a full-out horror movie and like one of the scariest movies all around, like all throughout the movie. But it wasn't that. It, and that's one of the things that's about like, uh, like has to do with indie horror movies, like A24 horror movies, is they don't like just go all in your face with the horror they build it up over time. That's what this movie did. For like the first half of this movie, it's pretty much a drama movie. And a really, really good drama movie. With just a little bit of horror sprinkled in there. But then like the last half, it was just all out horror. And it had some of the creepiest scenes that I've seen in the ending. And it's just overall, it's just a, such a masterpiece of a movie. And Tony Collette better also be nominated for an Oscar. Because she did freaking amazing in this movie too. Okay guys, here we are. This is our number one. This is our favorite movie of 2018. Number one. My number one is going to be Hereditary. Now this movie, I'm not gonna lie, I knew it was gonna be my favorite movie the second I saw it. Well, not the second, but the second it ended. There you go, sorry, that's better to say. But 
I knew it was going to be my number one. I didn't have to. I the the thing is, whenever I made my list, it was really hard to make this list. But I put Hereditary number one, to, like right when I started it, because this movie to me was just this movie to me. I don't want to say it's perfection because I do have tiny issues with it, but I can practically say that almost. Like Zach said, this movie was mismarketed. I'm not going to lie. This movie is horribly marketed uh, because this movie is not a complete horror. This movie is a more of a drama almost just like a little bit of horror in it until the end which like Zach said it's complete horror but this movie to me it's so much more than what than face value it's so much more than what you're looking at the screen you know whenever you watch the movie don't just watch it for what it is think about it because this movie completely like engulfs you into it and I know it's a really weird word to say because a lot of people have I've seen say Oh, well, I didn't like Hereditary because it was something I wasn't expecting. I was expecting it to be a horror movie. It wasn't that scary. Okay, well, who cares what your expectations were? Watch the movie for what it is. I've also seen a lot of people say, well, the movie, uh, I thought it was going one way, and then it just randomly, out of nowhere, went off into another way. No, it didn't. This movie did not go, did not randomly go off into another way. If you watch this movie and, close, and closely pay attention to it, it's telling you what this movie is about throughout the entire thing. And I mean, uh, I noticed a few things the first viewing, but the second viewing you notice a lot more. This movie starts off almost kind of showing the main characters as being dolls. Cause that's the whole thing is like the mom is like, she like makes these dolls and like makes these really good like dolls and doll houses. And so the movie starts off like zooming into a doll house and then you see the characters in the doll house. And you know, it's almost explaining that these characters don't have control over what they do. They are being controlled, they are being manipulated, and they have no way of finding out. It's a, it's a movie, this movie is a movie of pure hopelessness, but a hopelessness that you don't actually fully feel until the end. You know, it's a hopelessness that you're, the second time you're watching, you're like, man, none of this matters. Be none of this, nothing they do matters because it's all hopeless for them. And it's just, to me, to me, the the scene with the with the boy uh, driving the car, the you know the scene I'm talking about, the really the really terribly sad scene in the middle with the boy driving the car. To me, it was just such perfection. That to me was some, one of the most perfect scenes that I've seen in a long time. It was just a scene of of you're watching you're like he should be crying, but at the same time he's not. But at the same time you look at him, I mean, you've never seen someone more broken in their life after they just made a terrible mistake. That's what he looks like. You've seen it. You see a face of just, just brokenness, and that's all he is. To me, this movie may not have been perfect, but for me, it was just what I wanted. Like it was more than what I wanted it to be. And I watched the trailers, and I was expecting it to be a complete horror movie. But what I got was way better than I could ever than I could have ever expected it to be. Now, for my number one, I have Avengers: Infinity War. Now, I can recognize that some of the movies I have below it may be better movies overall and at, at their core, but I think I'd be lying to myself if I didn't say that this movie made me feel a way that none of the other movies did throughout this entire year. This movie was 10 years of build-up, and I, you, you can say that as an as excuse as why I like this movie more than the other movies. But at the same time, that's kind of a reason why this movie was so great. Because this movie was the culmination of so many movies, so many characters, so many storylines. And they had to thread them all together and weave them all, all together. And they did it so well. And it didn't feel overcrowded. It didn't feel rushed. It, didn't, it just didn't feel bad at all. And there were times and things that I could say that I they could have done better, but overall they just they just made a movie that I never thought would be possible to be made. Thanos is one of my favorite villains of all time now in in the movies because his goal was so understandable. You might not agree with it. You might come up with another explanation, like he should have um, increased the resources, but you can see his mindset and what he thinks is he's doing is right because that's what most villain, most great villains uh, think that what they're doing is right and that's what Thanos said he even said that once he finishes what his his goal he the rest of the universe is going to be grateful he honestly thinks that what he's doing is good and that's what makes him so compelling 
And then the visual effects in this movie, there, I mean, like Aquaman, I, there were times where it was it got a little bit shaky, but overall, it was just so fantastic, especially with Thanos. Thanos sometimes honestly felt like he was actually there. He didn't look like a CGI character at all, and his voice was so amazing. And then the ending, like Marquez said, it just left you with hopelessness. Like everybody says, like, oh, it's obvious that they're coming back, but that's not what that's not what the whole scene was about. It's just that you have no idea what they're gonna do now with like so much so much of their team gone. You're like, what are they gonna do from here? And also the characters themselves don't know that the characters are gonna be back. So that's what makes it even more hopeless, the, the sense of hopelessness, which is throughout the movie, and it completely builds up at the end. This movie was pretty much the Empire Strikes Back of this generation, and I honestly would probably regret not having this as my number one, so that's why this Infinity War is my number one spot. Well guys, there it is. Those are our top 15 movies of 2018, with a few honorable mentions as well. Uh, we are going to pretty soon be filming our worst movies of 2018, and there are a lot of them. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, this is not a great year for movies. Uh, I, I'm like, what's what's really weird is this movie had some of the best movies I've seen in a long time this year. Yeah, so yeah this sorry, this movie. <laughs> sorry, this year, like Hereditary, was one of my favorite horror movies ever. A lot of these movies, Infinity War, my favorite MCU movie ever. You know, 8th grade, one of my favorite A24 movies, one of my favorite coming-of-age movies ever. But this year itself was not the best mo year for movies, you know. Yeah. But, um, so, that is coming. They, the movies on that list, a lot of them I just have pure hatred for. <laughs> uh, we just watched <laughs> Super Troopers 2 today. Oh, that, was, that was one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so anyways, guys, uh, hopefully you will... Hopefully you watch this video. I don't know, but <laughs> hopefully you'll watch that <laughs> hopefully video. Hopefully you made it to the end. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully you'll watch uh, our worst movies of 2018 video because I'm really looking forward to that. Because even though I hate the movies, I love talking about them because that's whenever we go all crazy in our videos. Because I can get pretty angry at bad movies. <laughs> um, anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I just should have said comment, so I should have saved that for afterwards. So I'll say go ahead and comment and. Let us know what you thought about this video. Give us a ranking of your top whatever movies of 2018. If you don't want to do 15, do 10. If you don't want to do 10, do 5. If you don't want to do it at all, whatever. That's fine too. But and, yeah, go ahead and comment that. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter all at 2 Awesome Men. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And you will see us later.